This is Joe Osgood with the Outstanding in the Field podcast, a production of the FBM Maine Outdoor Journal, where the Maine Outdoors is the main idea. Welcome everyone to episode two of the FBM Maine Outdoor Journal podcast. I'm your host, Joe Osgood from Carroll Plantation, Maine. Uh, this week we got some exciting stuff to talk about. We got the uh, going to recap the bear hunting slash trapping season that went right down to the wire for us here. Uh, we're going to talk about a big trip we got planned for deer hunting this fall here in Maine. And also a little recap of the first day of d- deer season here in Maine with a rifle opener. Tell you how that went. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about a partner that we're going to have for this particular podcast. Helped us out a lot during bear season, made us super successful. That's A.J. Harris with Harris Hunting Adventures out of Lee, Maine. He specializes in bear, moose, but can also accommodate any other type of hunting you'd like to do, whether it be ruffed grouse, rabbits, deer, you name it, he can do it uh, at a very affordable price and deal uh, high success rate. You can reach him at 207-403-3199. All right, time for a little recap on our uh, bear baiting season. If you follow our YouTube channel, you may have saw the video we made as we kicked off bear season, but not seen many updates since because that means that there wasn't that much to update on. We had uh, set out two baits for the normal bear season. We'd set one out on our own property there in Carroll, and we also set another bait out at a friend's property where there was some, it was kind of close to town, well, if you want to call it town, uh, small town, close to a small town, had like a 50-acre field, surrounded in apple trees, dropped off the back into a nice dark green growth swamp, thought it'd be an ideal situation, so we put a bait in there as well. For bait, we were running a... uh, I think I had two barrels of Pop-Tart mix, which was cr- about, oh, I don't know, probably 50% crumpled up Pop-Tart tarts and a few chocolate cookies, M&M's, peanut M&M's, popcorn, things of that nature all mixed together. Then I had one barrel that was a uh, trail mix mix, if that's what you want to call it. It was a mix of trail mix, including peanuts, other nuts, M&M's, peanut M&M's. Then there was a bunch of... Uh, Chocolate cookies and stuff mixed in with that, different colored cookies. So we had those three barrels. Then we also had a 10-pound box of candy corns and two 5-gallon pails of marshmallow fluff. So that's what we was using for bait throughout the season. Plus we were also trying out a few different flavors of the Wilderness Freaks uh, bear scents. I believe we used caramel, uh, cherry, and blueberry. I think the caramel smells the best, but I'm not a bear. So anyways, we didn't have a ton of success with those uh, those two baits. The bait on our own property, we had probably, I don't know, two weeks into the baiting season. Had a bear show up, maybe 100 pounds, maybe. Maybe a little bit bigger, but not much more. Showed up one day, like at 4 o'clock in the morning. Came back again, I believe the next day at 5 o'clock in the morning. And then disappeared, never showed up again. Now, coons, on the other hand, if any, if the price wasn't rock bottom on coons, man could make a fortune. I think on one bait we had six, the other bait we had four, and the one that had four were worth double the price because they were circus coons. I got a one picture of the coons dangling upside down on this limb over the bait trying to get this marshmallow that I got. And underneath them, there's a skunk eating out of the bottom of the barrel looking up at the coon. So them's the old circus coons over there, but didn't do us any good as far as drawing in bears. That particular site over there by the fields, never had one bear pitcher on there all baiting season. We baited regularly, continued to sign up, but just wasn't a good spot. A lot of people having good luck drawing in the bears, even with all the natural food. But even though we had, you know, big orchard type area there and natural food nearby, no luck on that bait. And we just had the two pitches on the other bait. So if anybody was out there wondering why there wasn't an update to the bear hunting video, well, there was no bears to be shot. So as the season went by, 
our partner for this program, A.J. Harris, contacted me and said, you know, once all my hunters are through on the last week, if there's a few days left, go ahead and sit in one of my stands. We'll uh, make a video up. He says, sounds like a good deal. I thought it was a great deal. But the way t things turned out, the way I was busy with work in the last week, and the way his sports ended up, and then one of his bear baits ended up getting cut off by the loggers, didn't work out. So I said, hey, if you don't mind, I'm interested in trapping a bear, if I can use one of your sites. He said, sure, absolutely. I'll make a video on that too. So with my work schedule, I'm away quite a lot in the week. I was pretty much only be able to set the set the snare on Friday night, Saturday night. And then I would also leave it in Sunday night, but I would pull it at like 8 p.m. because I had to get up at 2.45 a.m. to leave, so I had to leave myself enough time to sleep. So I'd go in at 8 p.m., pull it off. So he sent me the coordinates on Onyx of a nice little spot. Went in there, took about, I don't know, four or five days to get the bear coming back again. I think, uh, yeah, that first time it was probably, that first bear that came was only, I don't know, maybe 100, 125 pounds. It was the smallest one of the bunch. There was a few bears that ended up coming to that site. So it took four or five days to get the bear coming back. And I went back to work for a week. And then the next weekend, I set the snare, and I, the, during the week while I was gone, I had got a few different pictures, and I had two bears that were roughly 200, 225 pounds, and then that one small bear that was 100 pounds. So the, when I set the snare, I don't have a huge amount of experience snaring. I've only done a little bit of it. I uh, set that lock out to like four, four and a half inches, because I wanted that. I got onto that little bear, I wanted him to be able to slip out. Well, I set the snare the first night, worked just like clockwork, 200 pound bear, 200, 200, 225 pound bear came in, stuck his arm in the pipe, boom, locked onto him, got a nice picture of it, next picture, cable's just limp and empty. So we went in the next day, checked that out. Lock was pulled all the way. I mean, the uh, yeah, the lock was pulled all the way up against the stop, and I think I just made the loop too big for a bear that size. Should have probably went a little smaller. So I adjusted the lock back into three inches, thinking that may be the problem. But I've also seen that people had were using the steel tube type trap. I can't remember the name of it right offhand. Uh, Critted on or something like that and we use that trap and I see where quite a few people had uh, snares slip off because you don't really get that like with the aldrich snare or something that pops and jumps in front of them they kind of spring off and it cinches that cable up tight where with the spring that's just threaded over the cable on that one I mean it pulls tight but you don't get the jump factor out of the bear I don't think like you do with the other one but I could be wrong like I say I'm not super experienced with bear snaring but gaining experience all the time so for the next few sessions, it, that bear uh, had my number. He, uh, I think the next night he dug up, dug up the pipe, uh, or he would knock the big rock off I had on top, and then the coons would take all the bait. But he had no interest in sticking his arm back in that, back in that uh, pipe for a couple of weeks. So then I would, uh, when Sunday would come, I'd pull the snare off, and then I would bring enough bait in there to make him let, be interested through the week, then come back in on Friday night again, set the snare back up. What I had a, uh, one of those spy point cell cams set up so I could keep an eye on the site all weekend, and had three bear coming, I mean, there was one bear that came almost every single day. He was around a couple hundred pounds. And there was the other one that was a couple hundred pounds. He would, sometimes you would see them two there together so I never really knew if it was the same bear coming all the time. But anyways, there was a couple of bears that were 200 pounds, and then there was that one little one. But he would only come once in a great while. So we played this game for a little while, back and forth, back and forth. A few th different things happened. Uh, actually, the one week I didn't put enough bait out there, and the bears uh, left for four or five days. That was the week... Uh, 
second to last weekend in of the hunt of the season in October. And then uh, AJ over at, uh, that let me use the site. He had another site that was probably what did he say half three quarters of a mile away, and he was trying to snare a bear as well. So during the week he uh, I can't if it was on the week or on the weekend either way he set a snare up in there and on first second try he nailed one of the uh, at, well he nailed a bear that was two no it was one seventy I believe it was so. 170 dressed. I believe that was one of the bears that was coming over to that other site because I never saw that one again after that. And actually, it took three or four days for the bears to come back to the site I was using after that. So I don't know if that was from the if they were over there with that gut pile or if they just got a little freaky for a while. But they came right back that week while I was away at work. So that brings us all the way up to last weekend of the season, which was this last weekend before deer season. We go all the way to October 31st. Uh, I set the snare on uh, Friday night. He knocked the, I had, uh, I made a mistake there. I had a bucket there with bait in it. And he came up and knocked the rock off the top of the trap. Didn't pay much attention to it. Messed with the bucket all night. While he's messing with the bucket, Coon came in, cleaned out the, cleaned out the uh, tube. He loves to knock that rock off just as soon as he comes in every time, but he hardly ever sticks his arm in there. So that night was a failure. I'm learning more and more all the time. I'm a little slower than some, so it takes me a while to figure it out. So the next night I made sure no extra bait around. I got the tube down in there nice and well. I brought the cable all the way up to the very top edge of the tube so it wouldn't take anything for it to come off there. It was right on the hair edge. Uh, the net that I had down inside there, the bait bag, that was getting pretty well all shredded and torn up. So I found a piece of uh, burlap and I made a nice, nice sack of marshmallows and uh, uh, soaked it in molasses. Put a few other odds and ends in there, some peanuts and nuts. I jammed that right down in underneath that trigger best I could and I zip tied her in there so she couldn't come out. This, this is on uh, the day of... October 31st. This is the last day of the season. We're running out of time. And uh, didn't have very high hopes for it because had quite a lot of adversities and failures throughout the weekends before that. Uh, so we were sitting there at the house. Actually, we was uh, getting ready to have a big old, you may see this video if you follow the YouTube page. The video is going to be called Cream Style Coon. We had uh, some coons doing some crop damage there around the uh, food plots at the farm. So I got the boys a couple of those coon cuffs, and they nailed a coon there a few days before. So we uh, hadn't had coon before, so we wanted to cook one up for our series that we've been making for uh, bad rap animals that get a bad rap for being good to eat. Uh, so we had that in the crock pot, cooking up with some cream and mushroom soup and some odds and ends. We were just getting ready to eat. Phone vibrated, picture pops up, cables tight to G-string strung right out there, and I can see just the bear's head and paw, and I said, oh, boys, we got him now. So we dropped everything. The boys just barely got to try the coon. They liked it pretty well, but anyway, we was scrambling to get everything together because it's uh, Sunday, October 31st, the last day of the season. I got to head back to work Monday morning. We got to get to it's right now at 6:05 when the pitcher comes in. The tagging station closes at 8 p.m. Plus, I want to get video, decent video, to make to make a video for our YouTube channel. So we're all gathering up and slam, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, getting out through the door and down. We race across a couple town, get in the dirt road, go in there. Everybody gets all gathered up, sneaking in the trail there. I brought. Uh, uh, our oldest young fella, he came in with me, and then uh, my wife came in with me. She ran the camera, snuck in there. Sure enough, there he was, strung out on the old uh, cable. Put him down, uh, put him down quick and quiet, and uh, very, very exciting, very tickled about it all. So we was down to, I don't know, five and a half hours left in the season, six hours left in the season. And just barely, barely hooked on to one last minute. 
not barely as in the s snare was barely on him, but the snare was up there quite a way up above his uh, wrist pretty good, had a good bite on him. He wasn't going anywhere, but it was just, after all the failures we had, it was a very close call. So I tried to put together the best video as I could, had to sacrifice a lot of time on getting good uh, ground steel shots, all that wanted because we were just so short on time. Brought a jet sled in, drug him out, didn't bother to uh, gut him right away because I had to get out to that tagging station by 8, if not I was going to have to wait till the next day. Get out to the tagging station, 15 minutes to spare, 20 minutes to spare. Tag him up, call the... Uh, Generally, I like to cut all my own meat, but like I say, there's warm temperatures coming and just didn't have the days available to do it. So I called the meat shop down the road. Oh, they're out of town. Well, <laughs> here we go. Things are going south. So I got to thinking a couple towns over, there's another meat shop. I don't know if they'll take anything this time of night or not. I give them a call. Oh, yeah, bring her right on up. Bring her right on up. That's uh, D&R meat cutting up in uh, Woodapit Lock, Maine. Nice little spot to swing by and get your meat cut if you're ever in the area and need something cut up. Specializing moose, deer, bear, pork, beef, all that. They can take great care of you. So we drove 20, 25 minutes up to that spot there. And he jumped right in there with a knife, knocked the paunch out of him from everything. He had a great big gallbladder, a big baseball for the size of him. We strung him up there after we dressed him off and he was 173 pounds. Perfect eating size, nice big thick layer of fat on him. I'm gonna render that all down. Uh, meat shop went ahead and uh, is a gallbladder buyer, so they bought the gallbladder. I believe that was an eight ouncer, so that's gonna help a lot towards the meat cutting. And uh, it's gonna, can't wait to uh, get it back. Hopefully, it'll be ready for this weekend. So, starting from back when we first baited in August, things did not go as planned in the beginning. That's for sure. Hoping to uh, shoot one out of the stand. And uh, I had in the back of my mind was going to try to get a second one by trapping, but stand didn't work out. Next year we'll have more baits, better places. But uh, this year old AJ saved us, came through with a snare. I didn't even uh, own one of those tube type traps. I had to ask one of our old trapping buddies. He let me borrow his. Uh, he'd already caught one bear with it, and the spring was a little sprung, but... I cinched it up a little tighter so it get a little more spring action. She did the trick in the end. So that was uh, that's pretty much the recap of the bear season. Wasn't uh, picture perfect or anything by that means, but we got the job done. We got a nice bear for the freezer this winter and uh, lots of fat to render down. So that's going to be good. Kids looking forward to tanning that hide out, taking the claws and all that stuff, bowling the skull. And the tickle to death uh, with our first coon recipe. That, well, i got to say, it was pretty good. It tasted, to me, just like the dark meat on a turkey. Just that dark, dark leg meat on a turkey. I thought it was uh, excellent. wasn't uh, just uh, coons and bears and things like that. You want to make sure you get uh, cooked up real good to 165 for the old trichinosis. Anything that might eat a little meat, you want to uh, cook it good for that trichinosis. But we cooked it, I don't know, five hours in the crock pot on high with a cream of mushroom soup, a couple onions and a little beef broth, and salt and pepper. And there wasn't any uh, organism staying alive in that. And that just felt, you pull them bones right out with a with your fingers easy, just shake them right off. We just uh, gravied all that meat up with the sauce there and had some fresh biscuits, a little white rice and some peas. Fine feast, fine feast. So that pretty well wraps up the old uh, bear season recap. Now, on to deer season, my favorite time of year. So, I, uh, this is the week, first week of deer season. Uh, I've only been available to hunt on opening day, but I've decided that I'm not even going to take my gun out of, the, out of the safe until the third week because I have an exciting trip planned. I have booked the American plan over at Parlin Lodge over by Jackman there with the uh, Big Woods Bucks crew there just going to get the going to get the uh, three meals and the hot cot get a little place to sleep and three meals over there and talk with the guides when they come in at night with their sports see how they made out through the day 
hunt that Jackman area. So that ought to be super exciting. I just uh, had a trip planned last fall to go with my old man out to, uh, we was going to go hunt some whitetails out in Maryland. We didn't end up making it before he passed away there, so I just went ahead and rolled that trip right over to that American plant up there to pile and Lodge, so that's going to be super fun. Just sit back, relax, and do nothing but hunt all day. You don't have to worry about prepping any meals. You don't have to worry about uh, having a place to dry your clothes out, sleeping in a tent, sleeping in the truck, all that all that stuff. Just going to go take a week, do nothing but chase bucks. Hopefully we get some snow. It's the same area you may have seen on the youtube channel there where we did some scouting this spring on the mountains did an overnight backpacking trip that was over the same exact area i'm gonna uh i'm gonna head into that same same mountain that i scouted out this spring saw a lot of nice sign right on the very top of the left hump there's like a taller peak then a nice little saddle and then a little bit shorter peak that drops down into a couple of ponds we went up into that saddle and camped for the night uh no fire or anything like that. We just kicked out a spot with a backpacking tent and did the uh, jet boil stoves and all that stuff. Freeze dried meals. Just had a good old time. So we went up into that saddle and we snuck up onto that left hump. We didn't go up onto the highest peak because the particular loop we wanted to make didn't allow for it for the time we had. We only had two days and one night. So went up onto that left peak and there was a ton of, ton of sign up there. No signpost rubs, but we saw two or three regular rubs, uh, one or two old scrapes, and right on the peak up there was just ton of uh, ton of manure up there, pelletized everywhere. So I'm just, uh, I mean, if I don't see a uh, buck all week, it's just going to be a super fun trip. Good people to hang out with over there, and just uh, one week out in the big woods chasing them without thinking about anything else so that ought to be super duper fun uh opening day this of uh, firearm season last saturday took the wife out we went into the same area where i shot the crooked toe buck last year you may have saw that video uh we made it a little different went down through a little different area than i've gone through i've hit one little piece that we did that, that in this area we went into but i never hit the biggest part of it. it was a spot that my wife had gone through last year and I went through and filmed for her and did a little calling but for a, on Saturday we went in through there my calling was absolutely terrible I was just coming down with a cold and I, I thought I was the because I usually call with my voice call with my and uh sound like a wounded duck inside a bean can or something it was absolutely terrible but we got through it anyways and uh we didn't see much sign in there didn't see, we saw, I get, she saw a couple little doe lamb tracks, no scrapes, no rubs, didn't see much action, we kind of swung around the back of a big bog, worked our way all the way down it, because the, out in the hardwood part, it was so dry and crunchy, you couldn't even hardly breathe in there without making a ton of racket, but that's what it like, that's the same kind of day it was like when I shot Crooked Toe last year, but he just thought I was a buck when I was calling coming across there, so we didn't care about the noise, but uh, this particular day we didn't see anything, we swung around the back side of that big beaver bog, and uh, I found a place on the onyx where I thought we could sneak back across it, I could see the fingers of the branches of the stream and the beaver run, so I got it bringing us up along the beaver bog until I could see on the onyx that was we beyond all them fingers. We snuck across that swamp. It was quite thick and aldery. We, uh, my wife put a video up of it on her page, made a big loop, came back around to the vehicle. I think it was only, uh, I don't know, a little over two miles, I figured. We didn't have the tracker going, but I just run a line distance tool there on the onyx, and we went a little over a two-mile round loop. And uh, we had to get back out and retrieve the kids from their aunt's house. And uh, saw a ton of birds and didn't shoot any of them. But we did, those are starting to show up now that, uh, coming out to the roads, now that we've got a couple of frosts finally and killed some of the natural food around the woods and knocked the grass down a little bit so you can see them. Jackson, he's got him one of those new uh, Rossi Tuffy 410s. 
I got him a couple youth model. Well, him and his brother both have a youth model 410, but they're still not short enough for a kid that, for his age, to... He can't. He doesn't have long enough arm to put it on his shoulder. He has to put it under his shoulder. So I found that little Rossi Tuffy 410. You can get it with a short barrel, or you can get it with a longer barrel. I guess for turkeys, if you use that TSS shot, and uh, that's only got 11 and a half inch pull on it. So you that's that's quite miniature if you're familiar with guns at all. It looks pretty cool. It's all uh, poly stock on it. It's not hollow sound. It's good and solid. It's got a couple places on the stock that holds a couple 410 bullets for you kids like that like to look at that he likes that <clears throat> nice little nice little 410 so he's gonna he's on a quest to try to get a bird this year he's uh working on his speed getting out of the vehicle when we see one so he's uh having a little struggle with that but he'll come around he's still young yet he's only seven so it'll be interesting to fun to watch him uh grow as a hunter and be able to understand and hone his skills and see how things go with that so uh i guess that pretty well brings us up to date so far i don't uh no special guests this week i do have somebody lined up to come on one of uh, two people actually so hopefully the next podcast will have a uh, special guest on that's gonna give us a little information tell us about last two years he's gone on some uh Alaskan moose hunts been very successful, big time uh, canoeist, and uh, just killed some great bucks lately. Just a good all around uh, master guide and outdoorsman, and uh, hopefully we'll have him on for the next podcast. We'll put the questions to him. We won't have to listen to me talk so much and blabber on, spit and sputter. So uh, that's what we're looking forward to. Once again, I'd like to thank A.J. Harris of Harris Hunting Adventures. If you want to uh, know anybody or you want to do a real reasonable priced hunt specializing in bear and moose but can also do deer, partridge, rough grouse if that's what you want to call them, anything you uh, he can uh, do it for you and he'll work hard for you. You can reach him 207-403-3199 and he's right out of Lee, Maine and uh, he's the guy you want to hit up. I believe he's on the... Uh, find him on facebook i'm not sure if he has a website he might have one but just hit him up on that phone number and call text you well i hope you've enjoyed this episode of the fbm main outdoor journal podcast outstanding in the field i hope you uh tuning in again next time i thank you for being patient with us that we're not uh professional broadcasters we're just on here filling you in telling you the stories about the things that we like to do in the great main outdoors and uh, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. If you want to get some merch, head on over to our Facebook store. we got some hats, t-shirts, stickers, things of that nature over there. we even got some brand new retro style truckers caps with the old foam front. It's about a foot tall on the front like they used to wear back in the 70s and the 80s. I remember father wearing them all the time when I was a kid. So we got some of those over there. Or you can just hit me up on Facebook, Facebook Messenger. We can do it that way too. Just let me know what you need and I'll set you up. Till next time, be safe out there and uh, keep on shooting.